Good morning. Please welcome back DARPA Director Arthi Prabhakar. Good morning, everybody. It's just great to see all of you here again this morning. Up in the rafters, this is terrific. Oh, they're, they're, they're awake up in the rafters. That's really great. Um, many of you were here yesterday when Secretary Carter uh, opened Wait What for us. Uh, I wanted to share with you that after he left here, he spent time in the demo hall uh, and he got a private tour. Uh, he spent about twice as much time as he was originally scheduled and um, I, I, I watched all of you in the demo hall uh, later in the day and uh, you know, he got to enjoy the exact same thing. So that was, that was really, really a terrific start. I want to make a couple of additional introductions today because we have two special guests with us also from the Pentagon and they are sitting right over here. One is Under Secretary Frank Kendall. Frank, would you please stand? Great to have you here. And Frank Kendall is the Under Secretary of Defense for Acquisition Technology and Logistics. And for those of you who don't speak Pentagon titles, uh, let me tell you what he does. I'll explain it to you the way he told us his wife explains it to her colleagues, which is she says, well, you know, my husband buys things that the Pentagon needs. And if they ask her uh, what he buys, she says he buys everything that the Pentagon needs. <laughs> and that means everything from office supplies to R&D contracts to F-35s. And so um, Frank Kendall has a really important job. And uh, it, one of his responsibilities, the T and ATNL, is technology. Uh, the second person I would like to introduce who's here with us is Steve Welby. Steve, would you please stand? Steve is the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Systems Engineering, and he is also the President's nominee to serve as the next Assistant Secretary of Defense for Research and Engineering. And so what is on Steve's plate, what he does every day, is nothing less than work on the strategy for the military systems and capabilities for the future of the Defense Department and our military. So he's got a huge job on his plate as well. By the way, I'll also mention he's a DARPA alum, which is also terrific. <laughs> now, these two individuals both have done amazing things. They have very interesting educational backgrounds. They've worked inside and outside of government. The thing I'll tell you just briefly is that um, the two of these gentlemen are engineers to the core, and I think it was your inner engineers that actually allowed you to break free of <laughs> your incredibly busy calendars and join us. So thank you very much for your support for us to do Wait What, and thanks for taking the time to join us. We're just thrilled to have you. Thank you very much. Okay, we got off to a great start yesterday. Uh, tell me your highlights. What was your favorite thing? <laughs> demos. People like the demos. Anyone go to the Why It Matters talks at the demo hall? It was crowded. Those were great. Those, if you didn't get there, today at lunch is your next time for those of you who are here in St. Louis with us. Uh, anyone else? Got a favorite? What was your favorite talk? Femto photography, that was very cool. That was very cool. Uh, let me tell you what some people said um, on the app. Uh, someone who was here said, this is not my usual crowd. I'm definitely only, the only guy here in a Hawaiian shirt. I'm hoping you're wearing it today because I'm looking forward to seeing it. <laughs> so that was cool. Someone said they really liked uh, the convergence of unlikely variables to create a potentially new field. Perfect. That's one of the things we wanted to do here. Uh, someone else was a little more specific. They said they would eagerly await improvements in diaper design after Zach Server's talk yesterday <laughs> about impossible materials. Uh, and then finally, someone had a little love for the people running the live stream. Uh, they said, yet again, whoever runs the at DARPA live streams has excellent taste in music. Dave Brubeck, awesome. And I think that was awesome. So that was fun. <laughs> um, you know, more important than all of that, yesterday when I looked around uh, everywhere, I saw really intense conversations going on, and that is a really great start. Um, 
for all of us at DARPA, for anyone who works in technology and really cares about making a difference, you know that's only a start. And so let's make the plans to follow up and to turn those conversations into actions and then impact. Let's get going with that. Um, now, I know a lot of people who are here uh, have worked with DARPA before. Would you please raise your hand if you've worked with DARPA or are working with us or have in the past? That's terrific. We can only do our job because of the work that you do. So thank you so much for helping us achieve our mission. It's so important to us that you're here with us. Um, you know, it, there are also some people here who know DARPA very deeply, and they are our alumni. Would the alumni please raise their hands? I know we have a few dozen alumni who are able to join us. Thank you very much for your service at DARPA and what you're continuing to do. DARPA program managers come to the agency typically for three to five years. They come from everywhere, they make their impact, and then they move on and they continue to do great things. Um, and as a consequence of that, that flow through, we are really rich in our alumni. Um, part of the reason we did this conference was to expand our reach to people that we hadn't worked with before. So please raise your hand if you have not worked with DARPA before. Wonderful. Oh, that's great. We heard, when you registered, we heard that about half of our guests had not worked with DARPA before. Um, and this is also really important to us. If we're going to succeed in our mission of creating technological surprise, we always are challenging ourselves to engage with new people and new organizations and new ideas. So thank you very much for jumping into the mix. Uh, you'll, as you see, there are a lot of people here who can give you opinions about what it's like to work with DARPA, and you will hear you know, at least one opinion per person who raised their hands, because everyone has had a different experience. Uh, we don't cover the waterfront in the work that we do at DARPA, but if we're working in an area that you're passionate about, and that where you have uh, a great idea and a big ambition to get something done, we can really do some powerful things together. So make plans to plant the seed with DARPA program managers for a new program or to harvest some of the technologies that we've been producing. Uh, whatever it is, let's get on it and make no small plans. It's the time to step up. Um, let's see, so that's, um, that's really the work that this is all about. Let me tell you what we are going to be doing today. We've got a second really great day. We're here together in the plenary session uh, with the live cast this morning. And then for those who are here in St. Louis, uh, in the middle of the day we'll do demos and then in the afternoon breakouts. The plenary session today is going to start with three brief presentations uh, that I'll come back to and describe uh, from three of our DARPA risers. So let me come back to that. The rest of the morning, we're going to be exploring the future of artificial intelligence. We're going to be talking about bioethics. We're going to get into complex systems design for these phenomenally uh, vast number of components that we're now trying to deal with. Then we're going to head off planet and go on orbit with small sats. So it's going to be a good ride this morning. Uh, please keep asking great questions here uh, in the theater. Post them on the activity feed early during the presentation so that we can start to try to get to those as well. Um, and then for those of us who are all here in St. Louis together, uh, around noon we'll head to the demo hall. We'll have lunch there. Uh, the demos were great yesterday and uh, another couple of hours opportunity to delve into those and check out the Why It Matters stage. At 2.45, we're going to go to breakout sessions. Each of our six technology offices here at DARPA has organized a pair of breakout sessions. And you can pick from any of the first six uh, for the first half, and then you can, after the break, you can go to whichever session you would like for the second uh, portion. On the back of your badge is the, the, are the sessions that you indicated you were interested in when you registered, in case you don't remember. Uh, go to those, go to whatever else you'd like. It, it, you're not held to those, but ju that's just a, a reminder in case you wondered what you had, you, you had signed up for. Uh, those breakout sessions are going to give us an opportunity to dive a little bit more deeply into uh, areas like artificial intelligence, uh, the next generation of space technologies. Uh, we're going to get into the implications of biological technologies. We're going to figure out what open source hardware means for the future. Uh, and, and we're even going to delve into the future of scientific research itself, as well as looking at complex systems in greater detail. So uh, I think those are really going to be a great opportunity to have a little bit more engagement. So that's today. Tomorrow, you won't want to skip tomorrow, because tomorrow we're going to start with a panel that explores from three different perspectives the conditions under which life emerges. 
Then we're going to go we're going to go make some atoms so cold that they are the coldest spot on the known universe. Uh, and then we're going to finish the grand finale tomorrow right before noon is uh, a journey to the very frontiers of neuroscience. And we're going to peer into the human brain, uh, which will be a wonderful grand finale for this uh, activity. So uh, with that, I'd like to kick off the beginning of the plenary session. Uh, I would like to tell you just a word about the DARPA risers. We introduced them yesterday. The are 54 individuals whom we identified at DARPA. I asked the program managers, who do you see and who's in your community, who's in your network, who is early in their careers, uh, people who are currently graduate students or postdocs, people who might be working uh, in a company but have not yet been a principal investigator, are still within five years of their final degree. Who are you talking to that's really smart and has that spark and that drive to go do big things? in technology. And we put together this amazing array of DARPA risers. Yesterday, before, wait, what began? Yesterday morning, the entire DARPA technical team spent the morning with them. We saw their posters. We did the very hard work of selecting from 54 down to three, uh, who will make three short presentations this morning so that we can share with you uh, what the risers, uh, the kind of creativity and excitement that we're seeing from this next generation. So with that, please welcome the risers. Thank you.